And welcome again, AP Calc AP students. Mr. Record here. We're going to take a look at a pair of examples that come straight from our notes for topics 6.7 and 6.8. More integration formulas coming your way. Actually, have three of them. We're going to integrate e to the x and a to the x, and then just for good measure, we're going to throw in 1 over x. So these are very, two of these at least, are very common types of functions that you're going to see um, all throughout the rest of the year. So you want to be very comfortable with these. Let's take a look. So uh, right off the bat, you see we have uh, the two what we call exponential functions, e to the x and a to the x. Exponential refers to when x is used as an exponent, hence exponential. And I'm hoping that this first one kind of captures your eye a little bit and you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. The integration of e to the x with respect to x is just e to the x plus c. You know what? That makes crystal clear sense, right? And the reason is because if you go all the way back to last semester, you remember learning the derivative of e to the x, which of course is e to the x. We teased and said that's the easiest derivative formula in the world to use. And lo and behold, the integration or the anti-differentiation working backwards gives you exactly what you would think. So that's good. Now, if you look at this new one, the integration of a base other than e, let's say that you're integrating a to the x, which could be 2 to the x, 3 to the x, or in our example coming up, 6 to the x. There's just a little bit more going on with the formula that you have to be careful of. So it says the integration of a to the x with respect to x is 1 over the natural log of a multiplied by a to the x plus c. As you can see, a lot more going on with this. So you just want to memorize this 1 over ln of a. That's going to be part of the problem. And then the a to the x, I think, might fall in line with what you had over here on the right side, how the integral of e to the x produces an e to the x. It's just that the integration of a to the x produces an a to the x. The big difference is this 1 over natural log of a that you see here in this formula that you don't see here. Or do you? If the base is e, would you have a 1 over the natural log of that base e in front? Well, by golly, you do. And that's because the natural log of e is 1, and it's just hidden. So it's there, it's just that it's not really visible because of its value is equivalent to 1. Now, I will say that the integration formula that you see on the right is very rare. But I still think it's a very strong part of calculus. And in addition to memorizing this or putting this on the flashcards that we talked about, you certainly want to make sure that your derivative of a to the x is on a flashcard as well from last semester. And if you remember, that was natural log of a times a to the x. It's interesting to see that the derivative doesn't put the ln of a in the denominator like the integral does. Now, I'm going to be able to give you some better explanation as to like where this formula comes from if you just give me a, a couple of more topics to get you uh, ready for that. But for right now, let's just chalk this up to some good old-fashioned memorization. So how would you do these problems? They're actually going to be quite easy. The integration of 5e e to the x. Well, first of all, the 5 just drops down because it's a constant. And then when you integrate e to the x, <laughs> you get e to the x. Don't forget your plus c. You are done. Now, later on, yes, we might do some things where this x might be multiplied by something, or maybe this x is a little bit more busy than just an x, but that's coming down the road in a different technique. If we look at problem 6, now when you integrate 6 to the x, we want to recognize that the a is 6, 
So what that means is that we have 1 over the natural log of that 6, which is a very ugly, irrational number that we're not going to really worry about. Remember, the natural log of 6 is just asking yourself, what power do you raise e to to get 6? And e is this irrational number, 2.71, etc., etc. And then we multiply that by a to the x, which in this case is 6 to the x. Add your plus c, and you're done. Nothing more needs to be uh, tacked on or modified. Let's take a look at example 6, which introduces our final formula of the day. The integral of 1 over x. Well, according to this, it's the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Well, wait a minute. If, again, you kind of think backwards here, we shared a derivative formula with the natural log of x. And that was 1 over x. And again, in the course of this lesson, if any time I write a derivative formula and you're like, what? That's 1 over x. That is a prime e example of, of your brain telling you, you need to review these. You need to review these. Because you can't learn the integration formulas unless you know the derivative formulas. It just doesn't happen because they are the backwards version. So make sure that you, you brush up on these. So if we decide that we want to integrate the right side, then we end up getting the left side. But there's a couple of things that I want to discuss here. First of all, why do we put the x in absolute value? And does it need to be in absolute values? Well, I'll answer the second question first. Yes, it does. And the reason it needs to be in absolute values is because Right now, this x can be anything. Well, almost anything, right? It can't be a 0. But it certainly can be a negative number. There's no restriction on the x, excuse me, in that 1 over x. However, if you throw an x after a natural log, you've got to be pretty darn sure that it's going to be a positive x, because there is no such thing as the natural log of a negative number, or 0 for that matter. So that x can be anything besides 0 in the question, but we need it to be a positive result in our answer. And that's why we always, always, always put absolute values. And if you don't put them, it is a small deduction. The second thing I wanted to address, maybe some students were thinking, well, wait a minute, is it 1 over x, x to the negative 1 power? Well, why can't I integrate this using our power rule that we learned earlier in this unit, in this topic. Yeah, that's the one that says add 1 to the exponent, OK, and then divide by that new exponent. Oh, there's why. This makes no sense whatsoever. And the only time that you have x to a power and you don't use that general power rule formula is when that power is negative 1 and thus we use the integration of 1 over x. How do these examples look? Just as you would anticipate. This 5 will come out in front, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite the integral just to emphasize the fact that you have a 1 on top when you factor out the constant 5. At that point, the 5 drops down, and then the natural log of absolute value of x takes over. And that's a perfectly acceptable answer. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, it is possible that you could see this rewritten where the 5 can take the place of the exponent. So maybe I'll take this absolute value of x and raise it to the fifth power. These are equivalent, uh, as is if I wrote that 5 inside of the absolute values. All three of these have the same meaning. It's just a matter of you know, what kind of an assessment you're looking at, if it's a multiple choice option, about which way that they decided to go in their final answer. At this point, lots of formulas are coming your way. Just settle in, make your flashcards, go to Quizlet, and you can find out uh, how quickly you can get comfortable with these when you work at them. Anyway, hope this helps. We'll see you next time.